I think in terms of uh, the departure from Moombatone in particular, I think we got a little bit confined by what we felt like were the things that a Moombatone song needed to have. Like, you listen, I mean, you know, Moombatone songs, they're pretty much all between 108, 112 beats per minute. They have a very similar Dembo swing, um, usually Dutch surf rolls, Dutch synths and stuff like that. And, you know, we felt like we could take a lot of that to trap as well. So I've been always trying to make dubstep. Ian had been making hip hop beats for ever, and trap just kind of happened to be something that meshed our two worlds really, really nicely. I've been trying to make dubstep to zero avail, and the hip hop beats Ian were making were tight, but they weren't, you know, club like bangers. They're beats. beats. Yeah, right. So we decided to combine those efforts, and trap was really a, a great venue for that. But at the same time, just to address like riding the wave, I think it's a very crucial because this has been coming up a lot lately. And I want to address it appropriately because I feel like. There's a big difference between producers learning to DJ, producers getting into the DJ game via productions, and DJs starting to produce music. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, evolve over time with what is, you know, what's hot, like what's good. I really don't want to be caught in the past. I don't want someone being like, oh yeah, they were great four years ago, but like, eh. I don't really like them anymore. They just didn't, you know, they didn't really develop. They didn't really yeah. go anywhere. And no. it's like, who wants to hear the same shit over and over and over? Nobody wants to hear no. that. No, no. I feel like if you're not like trying to switch it up or like do something different or just even just push yourself to try something different, it's like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. Look at you, now look at us. Rich is full, full. Uh, the first collab with Hero Bus, like that was a cool one. We just did that like over the internet. Um, same with the Trop Killers one. The yeah. one with, with Boots with Brazbell we did in person. I think that's the one that was most harking back to that time when we yeah. were all just we hunched around a laptop on fucking Garage Band, being like, wait, 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 different loop, different loop, different loop, different loop, wait, 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 wait. Just like wait, all What this. about this sound? Exactly. Like, let's try this and start Literally out. heads oh, knocking together, packing one bowl, because that's all we needed at the time. <laughs> Good times. Back in the day. But yeah, that's, that's good that you brought that up. Yeah, there thanks. used to be a third member of Gladiator. For Shout out David Lowe. A month. Oh my God, y'all need to check out Scotch Moses. Go on a little Google. David Google. doesn't do music anymore. He's an actor now. He's very he's very funny. Making amazing, hilarious content on YouTube. Scotch Moses. Mm -hmm. Scotch Moses. I don't like getting into that conversation because, like, if it's not for you, then it's not for you. But if you like having a good time, then like, let's turn up. You know I, mean, I mean, I, I feel you could say literally the same thing about. Okay, let's go high art for a second. John Cage. He's one of the most famous composers ever. He has a piece called Four Minutes and Thirty Three Seconds of Silence, of Silence, and people sit in that room like, wow, wow. That was an amazing art piece. And people come in and say trap music's not artistic. Like, whatever. I'm gonna say one other thing. Like, I don't know, this might like offend some people, but there's like so many kinds of music, especially within EDM, that you could say like lack musicality. I'm not gonna like throw anything specific out there, but mm. like, I'm just gonna say it. Fucking like big room house, like. But even that, you're talking to some sound, of the greatest bro. producers. You're talking about some really, really so good it's like, producers. If you're like, you're gonna hate on that, like, what about that? You fucking love that shit. Like, what are you, come on, you know? So, I think, you know, it's I just. I don't know. I think it's people with a bone to pick trying to start shit. We probably, we probably can't, can't talk about some of them. Probably can't One talk we can't about talk about, about Spring Awakening. We are playing Spring Awakening that. turn up. That's, That's gonna, gonna be sick. sick. Chase. Wow. Uh, that was at the top of the list. So that was like kind of a dream like festival to play. So Hell yeah. Super Spring psyched Awakening on that. We played an Ultra last year. That was a dream come true. We've had a lot of fucking dream come true. Hard right? Summer hard last year summer. was amazing. Oh my I'd love God. to do that Ultra. again. EDC. We played EDC 2012 because we submitted a we really a sick mix. Or some shit. Thanks to yeah. Ian. Ian yeah. put together a dope mix and they were um, like yeah we won't glad you electric forest is one that we would definitely what? love to play we're not playing this year hell yeah you know, coachella in the future. obviously coachella is like that's a whole thing paradiso talk about that, obviously dude. paradiso would be the shit the gorge, oh my yeah. god seattle turns play at the, the fuck gorge up. Man. That's a really funny story because the show did not go that well. Well, I'll tell you this. When we got there, we were like, wow, this is a dream come true. It was an awesome festival. Laundry Day they is an amazing yeah. festival. They're 16 years in. It's an incredible festival. The stages are amazing. The attendance is amazing. Everything about it was incredible. Except that they gave us a better slot time than I think we, we were, were big enough for. Yeah. Like, they made us the second headliner on the base stage 
at this 16th year festival in Belgium. We've never been outside of the US. Who the hell has heard of us in Belgium? No one. So, we, as we honored right as we were. In this huge tent, there was like 5,000 people in who there. Is, who he's is, Belgian. He's, he's like a, a national treasure over there. He's like the flume of Belgium for dubstep. Like, it's insane. He is a big name. People were going stupid. We walk up to that stage. We see hammer. like 5,000 people. We both look at each other like, oh my God. This is it. This is the this one. This is the craziest show we've ever we're played. Are you ready? Crush Are you ready to kill this crazy so show? So ready to kill this as crazy show. As soon as show. he's done and we start DJing, I'd say about 97% of those people leave. And they're like, all right, Eptic is done. Fuck these guys. Let's go watch Laid Back Luke or some yep. shit. Or like Clear Dimitri Vegas and like Mike yeah, or something. Or Mystique. So like 5,000 people turned into like 300 people. Very quickly. And that was like a sobering moment. I don't know if you've ever had an experience like that. That like, is, it puts a lot of shit in perspective. <laughs> That's what I'll say. I mean, you it's know? just one of the, it's, I mean, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, we, we knew. We knew from the start, like this is a way better booking than we deserve. And you know, while we didn't necessarily expect every single person to leave, it was, I don't know. It's, it, it humbles you a little bit. It was kind of nice to have happen, you know what I mean? It took a lot I would of the rather, pressure off, I yeah. guess. Oh my God, so much. We were, at, at that point, we were like, man, like, fuck you, it. We were, it was kind of, we were just like, oh. Okay. Yeah, if this is how oh, it's going to be. Uh, then All like, right, well, let's again, just do this you know, like, you know. I, We feel like it's part of paying your dues. Yeah. If you just go through your whole, you know, go through all of the work and not have like a downfall of epic proportions, like, and have something to rise back up from, take that and be like, okay, that was not what should happen ever again. Oh my God. Only everybody. Great. Honestly, right. like. Shout out Sports Center, first and foremost. I'm shout out Sports Center. Down with that. Um, shout out Mike and Andy, the management Killing team. It. Shout, it out John Jung, shout, shout out John Jung, shout out AM Only. Oh my God, shout out AM Only. Fool's Gold, thank you for Fool's everything. Fool's Gold, shout out Lydia. Shout out Alan for keeping everything super gully on this tour. Shout out Big G for bringing Shout us on G, this tour. Shout out Big G, Don Jeremy, oh my God. Shout out everybody on the bus, fucking Ryan and Rupal. Oh my God, fucking. Nat, fucking Natalie, yeah. fucking Smalley. Smalley on the everybody. lights. Everybody, oh my God, everybody's it. really. Nick just running that sound. Nick running sound, just killing, killing it. it. Everybody's doing an amazing job. This um, tour has been a dream come true. Yeah. And just shout out to our fans. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Thank so. you guys for having shout us out to Heady Tunes this interview. Seriously, interview. shout out Heady Tunes. Everybody check out Heady Tunes. They got the dank beats. They get you what you need. Gladiator.